This is Dr. Mark Trexler with The Climate Countdown, exploring what's often referred to as the experiment of human-caused climate change. During the 1950s, when scientists started exploring potential climate change, many assumed that the oceans would absorb most of the carbon dioxide, or CO2, being released by human activities. In 1957, however, eminent scientist Roger Revelle suggested the, that the oceans couldn't be counted on to do that. He famously characterized growing fossil fuel emissions as a, quote, large-scale global geophysical experiment, end quote. Since then, scientists have learned a lot about how the atmosphere works and about how the Earth's climate has changed over hundreds of millions of years. In a very real sense, we're engaged in much less of an experiment today than we were in 1957 because we have a good idea of how the story ends. Once we learn the water boils at 100 degrees centigrade, for example, brewing a cup of tea no longer involved any experimentation. When it comes to climate change, we know that every degree centigrade of warming historically has been associated with roughly 20 meters of sea level rise and that a five degree centigrade warmer planet would be ice free. The massive amount of climate related knowledge gathered since 1957 has been incorporated into the climate models that are being used today to forecast the results of human caused climate change. Because we know so much more than we did then, in a very real sense, it's not the same experiment as it was in 1957. But there's an aspect of climate change that very much remains an experiment. As scientist Benjamin Strauss has pointed out, for example, it is trivial to predict a pile of ice in a warm room will all melt, but much harder to predict the exact rates over time. Here's where the experiment comes back in. At what rate will the Earth warm? And at what rate will the Earth's ice melt? Etc. Shouldn't we know the answer to that question from the Earth's historical record? As it turns out, there's a hitch. The term climate forcing is used to characterize how rapidly human activities are changing the atmosphere and driving climate change. For example, human activities are changing the Earth's energy balance at a rate equivalent to detonating four Hiroshima-sized atomic bombs every single second. By one estimate, the climate forcing associated with human activities today is one to 200 times greater than the climate forcing during past examples of naturally occurring climate change. This raises an interesting question. If today's climate models are calibrated against past examples of climate change that were driven by natural forces over thousands and tens of thousands of years, Will they correctly forecast the course of human-caused climate change, which is literally playing out over decades? Interestingly, key climate change signals seem to be progressing much faster than scientists were anticipating just 10 to 20 years ago. The rate of loss of Arctic ice is a prominent example. Not long ago, scientists hypothesized we'd see the first ice-free summer Arctic by the 2070s or 80s. Now it's the 2030s. And this is just one of many examples where we're seeing climate change play out differently than we might have expected. So while we have a much better understanding of how climate change will ultimately play out than Roger Revelle did in 1957, there's a lot of near-term and mid-term uncertainty about what comes next. We still are engaged in a planetary experiment, and we're probably in for a lot of unpleasant climate surprises along the way. This is Mark Krexler with The Climate Countdown. Dig deeper into this and other climate countdown topics at our website, climatecountdown.climatesites.net. And thanks for listening.